I'm Sharon, a compulsive overeater. I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet, committed to my sponsor, and I don't eat in between meals. No matter what, I'm so grateful for my abstinence and for this community as well. Oh, sorry, I forgot to shut my work phone off. Um, so um, the one thing I just want to say first is I thought it was so great how, you know, everybody pulled together to get this going and, you know, nobody is worrying about how it happened, what happened, just like, let's just move forward and, and get things done. And that's it. And that's what I learned in Gray Sheet. So I just want to bring that out there. I, I think it's great. Um, and that's what I learned from this community. So all day I had a bunch of things in my head of what I was going to share about and, and all of that. And I just really listened to other people who qualify. And um, it's whatever hits me for the moment. And what's been hitting me now, I, I'd like to, can I screen share? I wanted to show my pictures. I think I can do it. It's set, yeah, there we go. So this is what, can you see? I have two pictures up here. So that's me with curly hair. Hair's still curly, but thank goodness the body is at least a normal size. This was one of the pictures that uh, right before actually Overeaters Anonymous, because they came through the doors of OA in 2010, I um, lost uh, or gave away, uh, thank God, 90 pounds. And then I started gaining again. I could not stay abstinent. And my sponsor kept saying, and, and I loved my sponsor, um, kept saying, you're just not willing enough. You're just not willing enough. I was so willing. I was desperate. I was in pain physically. I was in pain emotionally. There was, I couldn't have been more willing. Um, but I was on my own food plan. I didn't have the boundaries. And thank God, my husband uh, kicked me out of the house one day and said to me, you really need a meeting. You're in pain. Go. And I went. And that's where I learned about Gray Sheet because I thought OA was the last house on the block. I had no idea that Gray Sheet even existed. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, so getting into Gray Sheet, it gave me those boundaries. So I was at a meeting the other day. I've been on a meeting. Um, well, I missed two meetings since December 16th of this year. And what's happening is my food is in order. I get that I have to weigh and measure. I get that that could go away at any moment. I get that if I take that first bite or even entertain the thought of having a first bite, it can, can and probably will happen. Um, you know, how many people share about, oh, well, you know, my, my friend says, you know, how uh, can't you just have a little, can't you just do this? Are you going to be doing that for the rest of your life? I pray that I do. And, and I never for a moment take it for granted that I'm going to, I just hope that I am. Um, because without it, I can't, I can't function, um, the way that I want to live, the way that I would like to conduct myself in the way that, that I want to move forward in my life. So what I heard on one, a meeting the other day is you have to put down the drug first. So what's my drug? It's food. It's food. It's the sugar, the grains, anything that whatever turns into sugar. Um, so, so I have that part where I'm weighing and measuring. I, I, for today, for this moment, at whatever time it is, 316 here in Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, I know that, that I have to weigh and measure. Um, and um, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, even that, even that, ordinarily, I would not be able to think now. Now, I would have ruined the whole thing, and I forgot, and all of that. I would have just been beating myself up, but Grace, she taught me differently. Take a moment and pull myself back together again. Um, but I had to put down the drug in order to hear, um, because when I was in it, the only thing in my head is what's next. I shouldn't be eating this. Why am I doing this? Why can't I be like everybody else? But I want it, but I can't have it, but I shouldn't. What diet is next? On and on and on. So I also heard at another meeting, I need a checkup from the NECA. 
And that's what it is for me today. So I have the food, I'm weighing and measuring, sending it to my sponsor. I know that. Um, but, you know, here I am five years later, and I still wasn't really working the steps so much. And, and I didn't know it. That's the amazing thing about this, Lynn, I, that the drug was down, and yet it took me all this time to really figure out that what everybody else is talking about it, and I've heard it over and over again, but for this compulsive overeater, I need to be dragged through the dirt a few times before I get it. So there's where my, my acceptance is where I have to surrender to who I am. No, to what I have. It's not who I am. My disease is not who I am. But I have to know that I have a disease. And the way that my disease is, I didn't get the, wow, I get this program and now I believe in God and now I have the life beyond my wildest dreams. That's not happening for me. It's just not. Is my life better? Absolutely. Is it, somebody else said, rainbows and unicorns every day? Absolutely not. But I have tools. I had a really, really crazy, crazy Monday this week. And it brought me to such a horrible place of self-loathing. I was beating myself up. Oh, I, why did I do this? Why I should have done that, should have done this. And it took me till seven o'clock at night. And this happened early in the morning. So I spent my entire day in misery until I said, oh, get to a meeting. I kid you not. And this is today. This is today. Will it work tomorrow? I don't know. But well, it was Monday. I got on that seven o'clock meeting. The screen opened up. There everybody was. And the serenity prayer. And I said, ah. This is how I know what do I do next. I'm feeling the feeling. It used to be I'm feeling a feeling, stuff it down. And for me, it was happy, sad, anxious, excited, anything, anything, any feeling. I just shoveled it in. I was a grazer. It was literally, literally all day long. And I mean, sometimes to the point of just being so sick, um, like really nauseous. But so that was my tool, right? That's the only tool I knew because I started so young. I remember even as a kid being anxious with so many kids at a birthday party and, and I was so anxious. And where was I at the table waiting for everything to come out? And where were the other kids playing? I couldn't because I was too anxious and I needed to sit and, and feel better. I didn't know this as a kid. I didn't even know this as an adult. So today I have another tool and it's been given to me and, and I'm tired of saying, when will I learn? So on Monday, all I said was, okay, so seven o'clock. So it took me all day. Was I thrilled that it took me all day? No, but at least it stopped. At least it didn't turn into Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. So that's the gift that I see in this program. Um, something else that somebody had said that spoke to me so strongly is that the only way out is through. And I have to remember that if I'm going to get out of whatever funk I'm in, I have to get through it. I have to go through it, which means I have to face it. And I see a difference in myself when I'm not facing something. It's because I don't want to do it. It's because it's too painful to do it. It's because I'm not really a fan of doing it. And I would absolutely rather be doing something else, such as my job, which pays some bills, which gives me my insurance. And you know what? I have to do what I have to do. So somebody else told me another thing I learned is I have to put on my big girl pants and say, this is what it is. You know, did I, do I feel like getting on every day, five days a week, sitting in front of a computer all day? Not really. So I find things in my job that I appreciate and um, whatever it is, it is. And there's some days I don't appreciate it at all. And I feel so strongly that I have to say that because I really did sit for the longest time seeing how peaceful everybody is. And, and saying, I wish I could have that. And this is ingratiate. This is being abstinent also. But, you know, the saying, if you want what I have, do what I do. 
just by listening to somebody in the one hour that they qualify, five more, thank you. Just by listening to somebody when they're qualifying, it's positive pitches, right? So I love the program. I, I need this program. I want this program because I don't want to go back to what I was. But I feel that it's very, very important to know that my every day is not going to be spectacular. And I need to hear that from myself. I need to know that. Um, something else that I want to say in those pictures that I showed you, I just missed out on so much in life, so much in the way that even though I was at that party when I was in the gray outfit, I was behind the scenes because I was more thinking about what was there to eat. I was also too embarrassed to get on a dance floor because not only were my shoes uncomfortable because my feet were swelling from what I ate before I got to the wedding because I didn't want to eat so much while I was there, which I did anyway. But I was back. I was behind the scenes. Now that I am, and, and I always thought that when I lost weight and had a normal size body and I bought a pair of jeans, Gap jeans, for those of you who like the Gap, um, with a belt, with a tucked in shirt, life was going to be fabulous. I was going to be the one on the dance floor. I was going to be the one talking to everybody. No, I'm still me. I'm not miserable like I was, but I'm still not all that so much out there. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to all of a sudden become this sociable person and a social person. I'm still kind of on the quiet side. I'm still sometimes behind the scenes. And sometimes I'm, I, I have to remember that's, that's who I am. And I have to figure out, and that's where I am now. And that's what these meetings are doing for me. Going to gray sheet meetings, I'm doing service. So I'm not only doing for me. That's why when I'm asked to speak, I do my very best to speak. I do have a busy life, but I try not to make excuses. I'm learning so much about myself. And when somebody these days say, you know, I noticed that you're doing whatever. Thank you very much for telling me. I will think about it. And sometimes I'll say I'm not ready yet. Sometimes I'll say, you don't know what you're talking about in my head, not to their face, but no matter what goes on in my life today, the worst day that I had on Monday, that was so horrible, you know, and it should be the worst thing in my life too. I just want to let you know that. Um, I just feel like it, it is 10 times better because I, I always end up somehow on the other side, that I've gone through it and I get through it. And I get through it with the community. I mean, I have these sayings. So there's times also I'll be sitting in a meeting and I'm, oh, I didn't like what that person said. I didn't need that, depending on the mood. I don't need that. But a couple of days later, even a couple of weeks later, I hear what that person says loud and clear. And thank goodness sometimes I was there to hear it. So I just, you know, when people say keep weighing and measuring and wait for the miracle to happen, it's a miracle that I'm willing to be on a meeting every day. It's also because of Zoom. Um, I'm really grateful for these Zoom meetings. And, and I really have been trying to say that if I have to do anything, if anybody knows of anything of where I would need to do service to keep these Zoom meetings going, I would really like to do it because there's no way I would be doing a meeting every day. I can't. Thanks. Thanks, Aga. I wouldn't be able to do that um, because just driving around, I mean, if it's a half hour here or 20 minutes here, that tacks on 40 minutes to an hour. Who has that kind of time? Uh, if I have to, I'll do it, though. Uh, I just I know I wouldn't be able to do the, the whole, you know, the every day. Um, but I just I. I I am so grateful, so grateful for this program. I'm so grateful that it taught me um, that I need and have a higher power. Honestly, I, I don't know what I call that higher power yet. Right now, it's the meetings and it's the books that I'm reading and it's the people that I'm learning from. Um, and, and, and it's not me. And that's the most important piece for me. It is not me. When I start telling myself, oh, you could do this, you could do that. 
No, you need to rethink with the program words and the program mind. So I'm very, very grateful that I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet without exception. And I have uh, four cups of abstinent drinks and that's how I get through my day and my night and I am so, and meetings. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much for letting me share.